Today we are in the studio with the beautiful Anissa Kamish, my good friend, ceramicist, jeweler, now furniture maker. Hi, welcome. <laughs> and she has let us come around, have a look at all of her gorgeous ceramics. So in the studio we're just surrounded by the most beautiful homeware, jewellery, chairs, everything. Women. Women, exactly. <laughs> it's all boobs and bums today. And we're going to be doing a little 90s inspired makeup look with Anissa and we're going to have a chat about her life and upbringing and her creative work. So the first thing we're going to do is bleach your brows. Yeah. <laughs> and this has agreed to, ble to bleach her brows and she's never done it before so it's going to be like quite a quite an experience right where did you grow up in paris in paris it was in the um, east side like it's a bit like the equivalent of hackney oh. <laughs> so it was very diverse and yeah. colorful and lots of spices yeah. and, and beauty around me my family's from algeria mm. so that's why people uh, often in england struggle guessing where i'm from because i sound french but i don't, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think i look french uh, my father was born in france and my mom was born in algeria were they creative um, your parents uh, my mom was actually my mom um loved painting She's an, an excellent cook, so she oh, she would always make beautiful looking like dishes. Yeah, so we were she, painting together when I was young. So she was kind of like your probably where you got a lot of your maybe creative kind of genes from. As creative as she was, mm. she loved um, university and yeah. she was an academic. So she studied engineering until the fourth year in Algeria and then her parents took her away from school to marry my dad. Oh my god. So she didn't graduate. Yeah. So she insisted with me, uh, like drop your paintbrushes and just focus on your calculator. Yeah. I was like, Fine. like most parents actually, yes, I suppose. Yeah. Did you start out in jewellery? Always, always made jewellery. Did you? For, like, from the minute I think I was breathing, almost <laughs> like I had my ears pierced very early. That's mm. what Arabic people do. Like they get your ears pierced at like four years old. Yeah. You don't even remember. And I remember playing around with my pearls mm -hmm. already. I remember having a chain that I broke, uh, that I, that got broken, and I would rub my um, ankle, my ankle, making anklets, really? making like little bracelets. I uh, would wrap it around and around my finger making like multiple chain rings and then when I start I would uh, just ask gifts that I had to do with jewellery so like jewellery, beading machine, jewellery How like, funny! So it really yeah. was like from a very young age you just yes. had this like sensibility for jewels Completely Do you think it was, do you think there's any part of your kind of Algerian heritage that pushed you towards that? Do you remember I growing up with... My mum was quite precious mm. and she she adored jewellery. When you get married uh, in North Africa, usually you get a massive uh, jewellery set from inherited mm. from your family. I remember being fascinated by that and my mum had to hide it because I would just go find where it, where it was and then <laughs> like the pieces would get lost in the flat. Thank yeah. God we didn't live in a, in a castle so she would always find them. Yeah. But she had a few techniques to hide jewellery from me. <laughs> now she's the magpie when she comes here. She's like, where's your safe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the hard part. This is where we have to do lips and talk at the yeah. same time. So this is like I'm going to the hardest. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, do you know what? I could ask all of these questions about like, where did you study and all of that? But actually, why, why do you think you gravitated towards like the female body? Because obviously mm. that's the really present thing, mm -mm. I think, in your work. And where did that come from? I think well, multiple reasons. I would say, first, I'm really fascinated by women. My mom used to paint a lot of women. Um, and I grew up in a family f like mostly surrounded my mom, my sister, my aunties, my grannies. It, it was quite separated yeah. between women and men. And often, um, I think it's maybe bad luck in my family, but men would leave and it would be oh. just the rest of us. So it was very like female led. So a lot of examples of either my aunties or even my mom. Mm. Um, providing for the family by themselves. Yeah. So I have a fascination really for women's resilience in general. Because I remember the... some of the first things that I saw of your work were mm -hmm. like your, um, the jewellery, I suppose, yes. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And are you self-taught in terms of um, mm -hmm. making jewellery or do you have, do you work with, desi do you, you design it? No, and then I you studied um, jewellery design. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Jewellery making, actually. Did first. you? Then I really hated it. Mm. What did you hate about it? Uh, 
so superficial. Breaking my nails, burning myself. Really? <laughs> cutting myself all the time. Yeah. It's really like being a mini mechanic. Yeah. Um, it's um, high temperatures, acid, and... That's a nice color on you. I've got a bit mm -hmm. of a... Yeah, I'll show you, hold on. I wanna learn. So we just have a little bit of an interlude there to talk about, boys. I'll be back. <laughs> you were studying in Paris, doing jewelry. Actually, no, in Paris I studied engineering. Did you? To start with, yes. Hold up. So... Remember, because of my mom, and because I was I was quite good in so math. So you're actually a nerd. Yes. Ah, that's <laughs> why we get on, probably, <laughs> isn't it? But you have to be quite a, like a bit of a nerd to um, when you does like when you do product design, yeah. and um, it's all about proportion, and especially with jewelry, like one millimeter, yeah. bigger, narrower, like changes the whole proportions, and like yeah. Like weight is involved, for example, an earring should be 14 gram Ooh. maximum. Like you have to re remember a lot of numbers. That's interesting though, because I feel like when I look at your work, it doesn't look, for me, it's so like organic and sculptural and a bit surrealist, mm -hmm. which seems like a contradiction because, you know, engineering, like you say, isn't. It's all about numbers and formula and Well, a lot of, uh, like, a lot of artists have a very mathematical spirit as well or like mm. uh, have been like we've well, you've got doctors who also paint so i don't think yeah. the two spirits don't communicate together yeah. like look at you for example like, you're very rational that's true i'm yet. very rational <laughs> sometimes um like yet super creative yeah yeah i studied engineering in france mm. and then i worked for three four years yeah as an engineer it was a big consulting firm i was helping airports, supermarkets, like organizing their supply chain. It was like logistic, wow. which is actually yeah. really helpful now with work. Yeah. When did you finally go, do you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to design boobs and bums and vaginas now. <laughs> so I was 26 and I really thought that my world was collapsing because yeah, just, I had existed for 26 years and I kind of had been prepared for 26 years by my mom yeah. to become that person. So it questions my whole existence yeah. and back like now I look back I'm like oh fine now I have this company but back then starting all over again it felt like a, a, big a mountain to climb yeah it, it took um, a lot of courage mm -hmm. it started organically I was while I was working mm -hmm. I started making my own pieces um, during my lunch breaks I remember so I started making my pieces and then wearing them around wearing them in the tube and and what kind of things were they at the beginning that's the first one actually it's called Corn de Gazette this one yeah. oh how funny I remember seeing that because I remember mm -hmm. you made a bespoke piece for one of our mutual friends it was yes. very similar mm -hmm. that's inspired from my favorite Algerian cookie cake it's the same oh. shape I was wearing that and another piece in the tube and I kept people kept asking me where did you buy it where did you buy it where? yeah and at some point I was like okay should I just make, make a series of 10 and see where it goes mm. So I made 10 and then I, I sold them straight away and then I left my job, I moved to London and I wanted to study like gemology and because I come from like a family of academic, I didn't feel mm -hmm. um, comfortable starting a brand without knowing the whole, yeah. having the whole knowledge behind. Yeah. So I studied here computer aided design and 3D printing. Yeah. I learned how to 3D design the pieces, which was a very new concept 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was magical, like I just sit in front of a computer, yeah. design something in 3D and then print it and have like an actual ring. Yeah. That was, quite, that was yeah. quite cool. And then how did you get then from jewellery to, because I think actually now you're probably more recognised maybe for, you've got them behind us, for these beautiful ceramic vases. So was that just like a... So basically, to me they're kind of the same thing, yeah. to me. Uh, ceramics are kind of like the jewelry of a house. Oh, if that's a nice house is a human it. being, yeah. like a house would wear cera like would wear sure. jewelry as. So, at the very beginning, I had everything designed together. So, if you notice, like, you have a bum uh, necklace, mm -hmm. uh, a middle finger as a necklace, middle finger as a candlestick holder, etc. Yeah. When you create the ceramics, do you like work with your hands? Are you very no, no, no. hands on? I, we sketch everything do you? and then we have like a sculpting team that helps us. Oh brilliant. Like really refine 
uh, like for example love handle it took 14 attempts oh wow i think a lot of people don't realize like you know when i was designing the um the penis like, shaped yeah. lipstick mm -hmm. i think people don't really realize how much work goes into designing something that's possibly quite sort of simple it took like i don't know 20 or more yeah. back and forwards with yeah. my 3d team to to land on that Thing. Did you use like dildo images for your? I actually didn't. It was all you know from the, the imagination. That you know, I think if I, <laughs> said, if I said that this four-inch penis was from my boyfriend's, I think he'd die. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, wasn't. I don't know. I've never seen a penis. So I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, right. When you were growing up, because I'm interested to yeah. know about. Obviously, you talked about like the female form and your inspiration, but what was like your earliest BT memory? When I would go to Algeria, my cousin mm. Amina, she had like the trend, trendiest um, hair salon right. in Algiers, yeah. uh, the main city. And I would sit with my dolls for hours and I would just replicate the haircuts that she was making to um It was back in the days when, like, you know, those big wedding hairdo yeah. were like, on trend. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole ritual in Algeria. You have to, like, bathe the, the, the bride, like, you know, with a specific outfit. Uh, she goes to the hammam yeah. to get a scrub. Often she cries because she's worried about her first night. Yeah. Where she's going to lose her virginity. Yeah. A lot of meaning also behind um, just getting ready for the next chapter of your life. Yeah, it's interesting because I worked with Sabrina Elba recently mm -hmm. and she, her parents are from Somalia mm -hmm. and she was saying, you know, there's a huge amount of ritual that goes into actually, you know, women's sort of daily routines. It's lost in the UK. We don't have any of that, really. Uh, fake tan? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, fake tan. I just came back yeah, from holidays with my two uh, English besties and I, so I felt like I was missing out. Well, but speaking about beauty rituals, it's funny because I remember my cousins, they have like the longest, we don't have, like in my family, we don't have the easiest hair. I can't say it's not curly, it's not frizzy, it's just rebellious. Mm. I had this image in my head of them just ironing the hair. Like with an iron. But when you think about that. My mum like, used to do that really? in the, yeah, in the 60s. She, she had a perm because mm -hmm. that was all the rage mm -hmm. and then absolutely hated it. Mm -hmm. And so she used to take like the iron, you know, really? the clothes iron out and iron her hair every single oh morning. Oh my God. Which, um, Did she burn her hair at the end? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But I'm sure she'd have rather burnt her head than go to head school with a perm. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sure she was hot. I saw a picture of your mum. You look she, quite similar. She's actually never, ever, ever worn makeup. And uh, it was only in the last month that I said to her, right, I'm going to put some lip liner on you. And she yeah. absolutely loved it. <gasps> so that's quite sweet. I hope from your own brand. It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then when, when you moved to London, did things change for you? Did you feel like there was yes. a big shift in? Yes. Tell me about it. I just felt really liberated. Mm. Um, when I decided to move from Paris, the um, political atmosphere was very dense. Mm. It was just before the first terrorist attacks. Yeah. So I could feel the tension in the air. So there it's was actually a only a few years ago, really? It was 11 years ago. Oh my God, is that how long it's been? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And it was just really heavy. And I arrived in London and all of a sudden, None of that. Don't like. I don't want to portray a naive picture either. But I just felt accepted here, mm. and yes, I would like say my name in France, and it, like the reactions would just not be that yeah. welcoming. Yeah. And here, like, where does that come from? Yeah. It's so pretty. Much more accepting. Like, really? And then yeah, so I just felt. A nice, more creative. Here. Yeah, that must have helped you just kind of relax Completely. and just be. I guess your your true self and explore whatever you want to. Yes, and I was really helped by the weather because it was the warmest summer, I think, um, ever. Or I don't like one of the warmest summers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everyone was naked and having a good time. <laughs> having a good time. I remember dressing to CSM like because remember I came from the corporate world, so I kind of had to like renew my whole yeah. wardrobe. So I was always in. Them. Yes. Oh, cool. So which department were you? Were you over in... Um, Jewelry design? Yeah, but were you in uh, so Southampton Row? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would have been in the same 
college as you, same oh. location. Do you ever go back to King's Cross? No, but I, I've been a couple of times to use their library actually. Yeah. Um, because they have a really, CSM has just the most amazing library. Mm -hmm. How did the chair um, come about? How did you get into doing the furniture? So it's actually kind of like a lucky moment because as you know, so I just moved in this space. Mm -hmm. I was just furnishing my interiors and I was kind of not finding nice chairs at a fair price. And I was kind of struggling, yes, to find, to put the final touch. Yeah. And I was like, why don't I, design chairs then just for the space yeah there's a maker that is in Bermondsey mm -hmm. who had a very short lead time so I booked him in advance and he's just wonderful oh great and we went to visit his studio and um, we all finally found him really sexy and, <laughs> and, and we uh, hope he's watching and that he knows I don't think he will be watching <laughs> we gave the designs and like three weeks later they were ready that's amazing which is even sh a shorter lead than jewelry making yeah 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 and so what's next then for you do you think I'm just releasing a new tea set collection oh yeah so there's a tea set with did you see the like is this with the <gasps> vagina plate uh, no that's the past one oh. it's called Titi Party where is it <laughs> It's incredible. Oh my gosh, with a little removable neck. Oh, great. <laughs> it was quite hard to get the balance because we designed it to be like once the water would come up here. Oh, yeah. And it would run here. Yeah, but yeah. we still wanted it to look like this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Thank you. It's very cool. Could you tell it's a teapot? Well, I probably wouldn't know, but that's kind of perfect, isn't it? That's beautiful. Amazing. Can you see? I think actually that's one of my favourite things you've ever made. It's so simple. How did I guess it would be your favourite one? Really? I guessed before you I arrived. I really love it. I think because it feels so handmade and like, there's just something like very elegant and simple and... Well, they are, they are, they are all handmade and yeah. it takes them forever, bless them. But why do yes. you think that you've, um, you've always focused on like women's bodies and, and that's kind of been, I suppose your inspiration. So I have a mathematical explanation to it. Go on. For some reason when I studied 3D geometry I loved spheres and circles and el ellipse yeah. and everything circular. Yeah. And I find like a woman's body is just an accumulation of different ovals and circles and, and, and ar arches and so it just represents my favorite shape in a way That's... in all kinds of... Yeah. That's interesting because actually I don't really like circular things. I'm much more drawn to like squares or in my house, if I think about my house, I wouldn't, I mean, I have a round mirror, but I naturally wouldn't go for something ah. like that. I really like straight lines and... Do you like brutalism? Like more... That's my favorite. I see. Artistic period genre. Yes. A hundred percent. I see. Very kind of like sharp, bold. I like cement, I love metal. I just really, and I really, it's so funny. There's a bit of masculinity in them as well because they're made of this heavy metal. The metal, metal that's what appeals to me for um, sure. I would say, yeah, that's my explanation. For that's me. interesting. So how did you, did you think about that? How did you get to that? How did you like think, oh yeah, it's the, the circles, the, it's the like... It's like, you know, when you get a lot of interviews, it's yeah. kind of like therapy. You have to reflect. And I, yeah, and after you think two, three times, you're like, oh, that's why, yeah. oh, thank you. Oh, interesting. I found my um, my drawings from when I was little at my mom's yes. recently. Yeah. And it's funny, like, it was quite hilarious. It's just, I kept designing just women's bodies, but made of different circles. Oh, interesting. And it was very funny boob shapes, actually. I would make quite like Botero-like, like large, large figures with like, tiny boobs and then I would make like a stick with enormous boobs <laughs> and I, it, it was very unusual for a child's yeah. uh, drawings. I can't really explain the origin of that. Mm. Do you think if you weren't doing jewellery or you weren't doing design, what else would you be doing? Oh my god, so many things. That's why I hope I have many lives. <laughs> Do you believe in the afterlife? No, because I don't think I would go to heaven. So I hope... <laughs> no, I You'd have a much more fun time yeah, in hell. Yeah, probably so we we'll like be an ant or... Uh... <laughs> no, no, I would do a thousand things. Yeah. I would love uh, to be a musician. I would love to be a doctor. 
I would love to... I always thought in my past life yeah. I'd probably be a doctor. I mean, I definitely am attracted to, like, the touch. You know, maybe I wouldn't be a doctor, I'd be some kind of masseuse or something. <laughs> but it's, there has to be some kind of physical contact. That's what makes sense, you know, for me, I think. Would you be interested in, like, dissecting a button like or witnessing be, so that you see the muscles oh i'd be totally fine with it i mean i've worked in a dentist surgery doing implant surgery i've worked in a vet before doing my auntie was a vet so i'd go up to the lake district and we'd like i'd i'd assist her when she was doing operations on dogs and whatever and so um, you did have many lives already <laughs> yeah i did actually i've had quite a few lives even though we're friends you know we've known each other for a while I, there's so many things that I didn't know about you, like, I had no idea about you, you know, studying engineering, and I just think that's so awesome. What else, you know, do you think has helped shape or define you? Like everyone, like my upbringing, yeah. which was quite tricky because I didn't quite get on with my parents. Mm. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I guess, like most... It's a rite of passage, yes. isn't it, really? It was really tricky with my mom, mm. who was really, like, super strict, but, like, mega strict. Yeah. Yes, and she was like, mega strict because of I think her own, her own uh, upbringing. Yeah, her own upbringing, the fact that we didn't grow up as well in the safest mm -hmm. part of France or Paris, which uh, I, I guess like she lived with fear. It really triggered a very rebellious side of me, yeah. where I had to like leave home really early. I was 17. Yes. Um, I yes, I needed just to like move abroad and. And just maybe like do unusual things. Yeah. Yeah, my mom like is still joking. Like she calls me, is like, oh, I went for tea with my friend. Can you remind me what your job is? <laughs> <laughs> like, mom, you know what I do. You know exactly. She's what like, I yes, do. but why do you have to be the only sexual jewelry designer in the world? <laughs> like, mom, I'm not a sexual That jewelry designer. That sounds like a conversation I'd have with my mom as well. <laughs> I think she often has to do a lot of explaining to her friends when they're like. What's his mare up to? And she's like, oh, you know, she's just launched a penis lipstick. <laughs> she must be proud of you. I think they're, um, I think they just find it all quite amusing, actually, which is great. Just going to stand up so I can yeah. see head on. Whoa, that's just gone okay. down my, the microphone's just like totally disappeared down my butt crack. <laughs> that's nice. It was always my dream to have my makeup done by you. Oh, you're so sweet. So tonight I'm going to 25 bars Are you? to find a husband. <laughs> so tonight I'm going to look my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your bleach. Well, I hope you like the bleach. How do we brown. spray it so that it stays forever? <laughs> <laughs> I should probably describe what I've done. So basically, we bleached your brows, which you've never had done before, and I'm very excited for you to see. Can um, you see when I shake them? Still. Yes, you've full expression. I've gone for a kind of a mix of these kind of smoky gold tones, and I've also gone for a little bit of these to just sculpt out because I sent you this palette didn't I? Yes. So these ones just to like mattify and sculpt out the eye with a bit of black in the center and then we've gone for a kind of a grey nude toned lip liner and then I put the lip black in the middle just to kind of like give it a little bit more definition so you can have a look. <gasps> my mom. <gasps> oh what have I got? <laughs> Whoa. Do you like the brows? <gasps> Wow, I don't recognize myself. I, mean, I think the brows look incredible on wow. you. Don't you agree? Yeah, I love that. I think the brows look absolutely amazing. And I like that you've got these little blondie bits that kind of yeah, they make sense tonally. It looks beautiful. Wow. Wow, Isamaya. How do you do that in just 15 minutes? I think it's been more than that, but thanks, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If we hadn't been talking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. <gasps> Is everyone jealous? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being such an amazing model, and thank you for having thank us you. in this thank gorgeous you, space you. and you, talking yeah. to me about your life. Shh. My, my pleasure. <laughs> Come back more often to See. do my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I will do. I will do.